So today is World, World Book Day 2022. We are here gathering beautiful muses, beautiful authors, co-authors, <laughs> published authors, authors to be, illustrators, creative spirits, beautiful. Thank you so much for being here, for all of you who have uh, uh, said yes to joining in and uh, celebrating the magic, the power, the wisdom of books and what they bring back to us. Uh, we're gonna be sharing uh, in our panel here, the four C's or it could be five C's or seven C's, it doesn't matter, but the, those that we have discussed already with our team at Rainbow Let's Mother Earth, it will be about community, about collaboration, communication and contribution. I've got a list of other things that we could talk about, but depending what time we've got left, uh, we're open to, to bring in whatever is to be to shared and channeled through with much love, joy, peace in our hearts. And we're going through quite turbulent times uh, everywhere. And gatherings like this are so, so necessary. Uh, because this is recorded and we can uh, share it afterwards and it can affect, it can, can have an impact and inspire and create a uh, ripple effect on people's lives. You don't know who you're going to touch with your words, with your images, with your colors, with your unique talents and unique skills. You never know. So, uh, Thank you so much for being here, being visible, because it takes courage, another C, to say yes to that as well. So thank you. And thank you to all of you who have been uh, um, interacting in our group page and, and sharing the, the information about the event and collaborating in this way, contributing in this way. I, I, I totally, totally appreciate it. Thank you. Now we are Rainbow Let's Mother Earth, uh, an ecological, environmental, children and youth engagement project and movement. And uh, we've been going on for the last couple of years now. I'm the founder, Chrysula, Chrysula Sirigu, the golden muse. Chrysula in Greek means the golden, so that's how I decided to honor my name in this way. And um, I've got here with me beautiful muses coming from uh, UK, but also Poland, the United States and Denmark. Welcome. Now, it's, uh, it's so important to celebrate books and I have been celebrating books uh, for the last few years since 2010, 2011, when I was uh, broadcasting uh, my radio show, The Health and Healing Show. And um, uh, Sue Brooks has been part of these events in the past, and and I don't do the radio shows anymore, but I I gather people like this and and broadcast um, people's voices because every single voice matters. Uh, wherever you are, whatever stage your your life with me you may be, whatever stage you're in your self growth journey, uh, whether you are a published author, you are thinking of publishing a book. You are in good hands here because we all love books. We all love books and books have come into our lives at different crossroads, at different times. Uh, I'm talking from experience. I believe that that is something that is meaningful to you too all, um, that there's a book that has been part of your life that has affected you, has changed the way you think, has changed the way you perceive the world. And um, it did contribute to your own self-development and your own choices in life. Within books, I also like to celebrate poetry. And I like to celebrate every single one who actually participated in, um, in, um, in our recent publication, The Little Sparks of Joy. And we've got some of the contributors here, the co-authors and partners in, in our publication. And they will say a few words, of course, later on. I would love them to say a few words. Uh, little sparks of joy, messages across the globe, igniting hope, 
love, unity, and joy. And don't we need it? Yes, we do. So um, I will I will uh, share a few things about about uh, about uh, who we are and uh, and our mission and vision. Uh, I'll be happily to do that. Um, but those of you who are here, you already know me and you already know each other somehow, some way. Uh, you're connected on Facebook. Facebook is a wonderful little channel <laughs> of communication. Um, but the best way to, to find out about us is to connect with us directly in our Facebook uh, group uh, on Facebook. On, yeah, I said Facebook already. Uh, we, we also, we've got a website, rainbowlettuce2mothereearth.com. And of course, through this, which is available on Amazon uh, worldwide as, an, as a Kindle and paperback. And, uh, and also it is at a very special price in our shop on uh, in our official page on Facebook, Rainbow Let's Mother Earth. So if you put at Rainbow Let's Mother Earth, the page will come up and you can get that at a special discounted price. Uh, because we would love to give back to you, to everyone, single one, and be accessible to as many families and as many souls that you would love to receive some inspiration and some, some uh, um, calm in your life. That's another C. Remember, I told you there's lots of Cs here. <laughs> so um, now um, I would like to introduce you to, to uh, our panelists here, and, uh, and they, they've already got uh, their books out or they're thinking of bringing their books out or maybe you're thinking of bringing, bringing your book out and you wonder what does it take to uh, to get a book published um, well it depends the type of book as well uh, but I would like to hear their own experiences uh, instead of me doing all the talking and I would like to bring their voice into our circle here in our celebration but before we hear from every single one in our panel, I would like to invite um, our one of our ambassadors, uh, Sharon, uh, who who lives in the United States, to uh, to welcome us in and 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 create that beautiful space uh, with her prayer. So I invite you all to to uh, disconnect from your mobile phones, from any other distractions, and put your feet on the ground, feel comfortable. And even if you would like to put your hands in that position or whatever feels comfortable to you. Uh, if you got a candle, uh, if you would like to light a candle, I've got candles here lit for all of us in, in honor of, of, of light and love. Uh, so, um, and I will also share something that um, Sharon, uh, Sharon would like me to share with all of you, and that's part of the inspiration behind her prayer. Her prayer is dedicated to Mother Earth. So let me share the screen first. And this beautiful picture here. Can we all see it? Yes? Nodding? Good? Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you. Good morning um, from the United States. It's a pleasure to be here. This is a picture outside my window. And every morning, God changes the canvas for me. <laughs> and I took this one morning and I tried to capture the dew that was on the grass. And I just couldn't quite get the essence of the color but um in the morning when I meditate sometimes I just enjoy looking out that window and um there was so much stillness and I thought you know if I was the do what would I say to you and so I just picked up my journal and I wrote a little prayer to Mother Earth as though we were interacting. And uh, it came from the inspiration of this beautiful landscape. It's my prayer to Mother Earth. Greet me in the dawn. I have mysteries amidst my dew. Come sit with me, my darling. 
for I have many secrets to share with you. Facing all four directions, drenched in gratitude, I embrace this moment. Captured by your beauty, eternally breathless, speechless by your vibrant rays. My love for you is an affable, ever so boundless and free. No words could describe what I feel when I sense your connection with me, clearing my space, saging with Palo Santo, lavender and sweet grass. The cornucopia of aromas remind me of the elders, evoking memories of a distant past. To my water, I bow and give thanks singing my prayers of love and peace, asking that all may be nourished by your life-sustaining energies. I plant my feet upon you, embracing your soil under my feet. I feel the nectar of your lifeline, the richness of your very essence and the tone of your heartbeat, like veins connecting to your funnels, arching, branching light. I ground my golden umbilical cord and pull you up to the skies, a flickering night. How may I serve the whole? What might I say to these beautiful ones that I may better serve? Please speak with me and open my ears to hear and my heart to know. I close my eyes and I pray. My energy knows the way. I trust you, Mother Earth. As I drift into my place of silent bliss, you speak softly to me through creation's kiss. We are all connected in this web of time a collection of human history we are releasing to unwind. Love is always present, both above and underground. And we can feel heaven on earth in an instant. Just pause for a few moments, take a breath and slow down. Remember dear ones, we are the bridge between the soil of the earth and the vastness of the midnight stars. We are the seedlings awakening here, near, and from afar. Awake to the vibration of the planet, your home in these earthly abodes, your lights are being activated. Now breathe in with me and let go. We are birthing up through the asphalt, speaking through the spirals of time, a delivery of our ancestors, a higher frequency for all mankind. Bear witness to your truth as you gather your light and pass forward the wisdom of your ignition. Use your words only as medicine and your presence to help open another's vision. Closing my prayers now, I hear her few parting words. My water angels share many mysteries as my trees will sing you lullabies in gentle tones. My branches will always catch you if you ever feel lost, tired, or alone. So please listen carefully when I speak to you and never forget that you are always already home. Can you hear me? I am nature and you are that which I am. Amen, amen, and amen.
Amen, dear heart. Amen. Thank you so much. Beautiful. You are welcome. Beautiful. Well, uh, I would like you to unmute yourselves and just say one word, just one word that touched your heart after this beautiful, soothing prayer. I can start. Mm -hmm. I would like to start with the word bridge, bridging, heart to heart. Thank you. You did mention one of my favorite words, Sharon, cornucopia. I just love that word. I just think it's such an interesting, you know, sounding word, but all of it was, was truly beautiful. And, and it certainly made us connected with that nature. I love that whole poem. It was beautiful. It left me so peaceful, content. You delivered it beautifully. And I love the golden umbilical cord. Mm. That just was absolutely wonderful. Thank you for sharing your beautiful poem. Deeply touching. Bringing to my mind one powerful word. Peace beautiful and peaceful poem thank you so much yeah it was really a beautiful per uh, poem i think connection and we all one that's what i thought for me it was sleep i just went into a blissful just calmness i do that for everyone else so it was nice to actually receive <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I felt very much, I felt I was in the picture. I felt it was in the dew, in the sun, rising, the whole redness and, and going up and connecting with heaven and earth. And it was just at the end, it was so, so peaceful. I felt very calm and it was so beautiful. I really loved it. Thank you. And I would love to share it. I would love to share it with the world as well. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Mm. There you are, dear Sharon. Are you are you receiving it all? Yes. <laughs> I receive, and um, thank you. I I went with that one as you chose it, and um, I have such a love for Mother Earth. And when I met you, Crystal, it was what connected my heart to yours. Um, it's not often that I meet people that just love the trees, love the sky, just love her so much. And she nurtures us so much. And I, I love your commitment to allow our voices for um, the space to just honor her and each other in this really needed time to, to bring in that soothing and, and know that no matter what's going on, we can always find the beauty in the sky. Just look to the sky. What, what is the landscape doing? It's forever changing. We can always find beauty. If you can see, it's beautiful. If you can smell, it's amazing. If you can feel the air, be grateful. No matter what's going on, find something. And, and, and really that's we can create that joy at any moment. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. So I, I'm so honored to share my heart with you. And thank you guys for, for being here on this beautiful planet with us. <laughs> this amazing time. Amazing time. And, and we, the light workers, the joy bringers, the rainbow warriors, the change makers, whatever role you would like to, to embrace. Um, as a mother, as, as a grandmother, as, as, a, as a teacher, as an educator, as a writer, healer, we've got a role to play. So, so uh, it, it is, it is, we, we are needed. We are needed to, to reach out and bridge out and, and, uh, and through the poetry, through the expression of emotions. And uh, that's, that's one way of, of 
feeling that we do matter is by sharing how we feel, sharing what's happening inside. And, um, and then some people use words, some people use art, drawing, some other people use other ways, you know, through other artistic ways. Uh, but whatever we do, we, we've got these beautiful emotions, whether this, it is anger or whether it is compassion or whether it is kindness or frustration, all of these emotions exist, they're part of us. And as a teacher and as an emotional intelligence coach, my, my, my role is to bring that awareness and then allow this for our children, young generation to, to believe that they've got this power in themselves and whatever they feel is viable, it is valid. And, and, and then that's, that's how we, the, the whole idea of the rainbow, let's mother earth, uh, came because uh, rainbows are there to create magic and hope uh, and children respond to that and your inner child responds to that as an adult and and this is this is our our campaigns continue uh, because of what's happening in our planet these days uh, I felt the need to use peace letters to mother earth so there is I created this beautiful template uh, that you could download and you can use whether you are an adult or for your child or teenager. And each template has got different color scheme. So again, it could be red or it could be pink or it could be orange or yellow, et cetera, et cetera. So depending on what mood you are, you can write a let red letter to Mother Earth or a green letter to Mother Earth but based on my, you know, my uh, color psychology sort of toolkit, I could interpret why you're chosen, why you're drawn to particular colors. And that's what we'll be sharing in our workshops, our creative workshops as well, that, you know, they're coming up. One of them is on the 21st of March, which celebrate the International uh, Day of Color. And actually, on the same day, is International Poetry Day, World Poetry Day. So, so it will be two things we can celebrate on that day. And uh, there will be an event and then there will be a workshop how you can actually write your letter to Mother Earth. Uh, and, and then I'll be sharing more um, later on, but not tonight. Tonight is about World Book Day, but I just wanted to bring that in. <laughs> okay, so... Um, so I would like to say hello to, uh, to Maria from Athens, my dear sister, who decided, although it is 9.30 in Greece, decided to join us, 9.30 in the evening. So thank you, Maria. Welcome. She loves books as well, and she used to work for a publishing company for many years, so she must have loved books. <laughs> so um, now let's, uh, with all the beautiful prayer and all of that, the other thing that came to me is, is uh, and, and somebody mentioned that, imagination. You were actually there. The whole poem, the whole, the words, the, the colors, the, everything transported us. And for me, that's what books do as well. You know, it, it, they, they create that, that opportunity for us to imagine, to, to completely get lost in, in, in a good way, get lost in, in, in the power of words, in the power of images. Um, so if we try to bring in the, the four C's in our conversation here, and I would like to hear your take on it. Uh, you, can, you can choose any of the four C's in any angle you choose, you can bring it in. I would like to, to bring Mira in our, in our conversation. Um, and Mira, you, I, I, I'm going to you because um, all the four C's totally describe who you are. <laughs> So it is, you are, you are very much about connection. You're very much in support of community. Uh, you have contributed in many books as co-authors and you have collaborated. And when you collaborate, you collaborate not just 100%, 130%. And I adore, about, adore that, you know, you are full on. So, so I'm so grateful. Um, so, so what is your take, you know, just, Choose any of the four C's or just, just uh, whatever it feels right for you to share. With you. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, beautiful Crisola. I feel humbly touched by your words. You always uh, paint beautiful pictures with your words, full of colors. 
Well, thank you for this warm in introduction. So uh, the word that comes to my mind straight away is connection and uh, connection deeply uh, connected to another beautiful word, which is hope. And this is what I will be talking about. But before I will be talking about my book, you know, like that I have been co-author for the first time in my life. First of all, I would love to congratulate you on publishing the beautiful, beautiful Little Sparks of Joy, a beautiful, beautiful book that uh, my daughter has her poem in this book. And of course, uh, another beautiful kids as well and uh, beautiful poets, our friends as well. So tonight, Gaia, my granddaughter, she was reading this uh, poem. She is with me at home uh, tonight to one of our friends and he is a male friend mm -hmm. and he had tears in his eyes. Something I have never seen for a very long time. Mm. Like the written word can touch someone else's in on a very deep level. So I congratulate you on this beautiful project and thank you for allowing me space for my little poem, but most of a, m mostly for, for Gaia's poem as well. And there is another beautiful lady here between us, Kelly Chester, very special lady that I would like to congratulate her heartfelt,ly for becoming best-selling co-author of, um, of the phenomenal book called Unfiltered, which is also available on Amazon. And uh, you asked me, <laughs> Crisola, to uh, say something about Kelly. And this is my absolute pleasure to introduce to all of you wonderful ladies. And of course, I am very happy to be here with you this evening, tonight. So Kelly Chester is an amazing lady. She is a mom of, the, uh, of a, a wonderful son, Benjamin, that I met in person. I called her a yoga goddess because she is one. <laughs> she is a, a Reiki master with 20 years of experience. She runs a beautiful online group, uh, The Stretch jo Zone with Kelly, and I am a member of this group. This is a paid group for yoga lovers. And she does other amazing things in her life, especially for her community. But what I respect her the most is for her being truly authentic person, something she has been uh, writing in her book, in her recent book, uh, she wrote this book straight from her heart, the way Kelly is, and she's very authentic, very genuine person, very honest, amazing woman who in spite of uh, dyspraxia and dyslexia, and in spite of having a son with neurodiversity, she overcame many obstacles, and in spite being told that she couldn't achieve anything, she did. She is a living proof of what is possible for a woman who is going full with her dreams. For a woman who is giving without asking for receiving. And for a woman who can create a space for miracles to be happening in her heart. But not only miracles in her heart, in her life, but also very hard work. So a big applause and, and thank you, Kelly, for, for being you. Oh, thank you so much, Mira. It's a pleasure. Yeah, so I am very happy that Kelly is with us. And of course, saying hello to beautiful Noreen that uh, thanks to our connection, she joined this amazing movement. So after my short uh, speech about these wonderful ladies, I, I want to just uh, make the come back to my uh, starting point, talking about uh, connection, word connection, and with connection to hope. So this mm -hmm. is uh, the copy of my first ever project uh, when I became co-author for the first time in my life. And uh, this happened in 2000. Uh, 19, so not that long ago. And between this short period of time, 
I have become actually co-author of three best-selling books. And uh, of course, participated in Kisola book. Uh, I will just show you shortly all the book, all the books worthy of mentioning because all the books are talking about women overcoming the difficult situation, inspirational women, the women in, you know, in the in the power of resilience. So just shortly mentioning these beautiful books, Voices of Resilience and the shift, the new era begins. So this all books really deserve to be mentioning here shortly. I know we don't have plenty of time, so I will be talking really, really shortly. So connection and hope, why I am choosing these two words? Because as Crisola mentioned on the beginning of our gathering, we need to connect. We can't stay separated in this very difficult and challenging time times. We can't allow the fear to separate us from love. And we are here, all of us, because we are goddesses of love. We are goddesses of hope. We are here to deliver the word of empowerment to other people. Sorry, a bit breathless, my asthma. I will not take it longer, ladies, because I respect your times as well. <clears throat> so let me read something from my uh, chapter, just a few sentences about uh, hope. Hope was always my inevitable friend and everything that I experienced in my life has made me stronger. Not everything smelled of roses in my garden. There were dark times, not because I chose them, but I let them pick me, not loving myself enough, putting others first, but never me. I have comments on a personal journey doing my best to improve my life by creating it through positive thoughts, visualization and openness to new opportunities. So the hope is about us opening to the new opportunities, but I would say mainly the hope is about us connecting and staying together. So whatever is happening now in the world, and then the, in the light of very sad news uh, of war in Ukraine, which touches my heart deeply because I come from Poland, which is uh, the country of my origin and the country that shares border with Ukraine, mm -hmm. border along of 529 kilometers. So I really feel deeply all my friends who live in a United Kingdom and have friends and family living in Ukraine. And I connect with all people worldwide because each war affects all of us. We can say it, it doesn't <laughs> apply to me because this is too far. This is, my, this is not my country. I don't even know what, the, what this country is on the map. This all applies to us. That's why I am very grateful that we are here all tonight and I am connecting with you in love and sending love to all who need love at that moment. Thank you for allowing me space to express my feelings. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you are such you. a beautiful soul. I just, I'm so moved and touched by everything you've done. And I just want to honor everybody here. I've, to be among such elegant, heart-centered women fills my soul. And it's a smaller world. I mean, we're all connected. We're all united. We're all raising the vibration. And um, my grandparents were born in Lithuania. You know, it's like the world is, we're all connected and we're all here to support each other, you know? And yes, Ukraine affects us all. Um, may I read a poem? Mm -hmm. I'm um, going to ask you with pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, my poem is, is, I picked this poem today because of what's going on. And I wrote this poem basically when I write, and I start out one way and then it goes in another direction. But this is basically about all the people we've sent off to war that didn't come back. And it's about hoping for peace. 
and it's called Across the Sea. So near to me, I hear you breathe. In the depth of the night, I hear you whispering to me. How can it be you're across the sea when you can reach out and touch me so beautifully? Of hope you speak to be strong, not weak. No fear, no fear. You made that very clear. But how can it be you're across the sea when you are next to me speaking so beautifully? You have hopes that our world will live as one. Our children together will unite under the sun. No barriers will they see, for we have raised them instinctively to read each other's souls, not the color that they see, to love each other, not hate, to not know the meaning of discriminate. As long as our children love, the world will rise above. So how can it be you're across the sea when I can see your face and feel you embrace life so easily? You ride that wave being so brave for many a soul you are going to save. I hear you whisper of hope and peace for all wars to cease, for all conflict to decrease. When you whisper of compassion with devotion and emotion for all your brothers and sisters here on earth, I know you started this journey from the moment of birth. So how can it be you're across the sea when I feel your strength supporting me, whispering to me your turmoil, your strife? You lift me up with the hope of life. So how can it be you're across the sea? Are you listening to me? I know it's time to take risks, to take hold, to be bold. So much wonder is yet to unfold, whether you are holding your hand next to me or if you are always across the sea, forever you'll remain an inspiration to me. Thank you. I pray for everybody when you're praying right now. Thank you. But I, I honor their strength. You know, I, I, they've shown humanity is rising. Mm -hmm. mm. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Well, What can we say next? Hope. Peace. Peace. Unity. Are you listening to me? So it's about really opening our hearts and listening with our hearts and, and connecting. And whether, whether we find some calm and peace, I think it all starts from within, right? So, so if we want to contribute towards world peace, Peace for everyone. Start with you. Start with you, dear heart. Dear hearts, uh, do whatever you can to be in peace. And try to be in peace, stay in peace as long as you can. I know sometimes it's not easy. I know I've been there and I will always be there because that's part of being a human. <laughs> we can always stay zen and calm. But we've got our tools, we've got our little ways, our little support uh, techniques, therapies, whatever works for a single, every single one of you, you know, not that it doesn't work for me or vice versa, but we have got so much. And let's use this. And books are the tools. Books are so accessible, whether you prefer them to be on a Kindle or you prefer to have the real book, uh, I would always love to have a real book. <laughs> uh, so I know that they convinced me that the book, A Little Sparks of Joy, had to be in a, in a digital Kindle format. Um, still, I believe that nothing but nothing compares with the actual flicking through and connecting with the images and, and something so solid and you can feel it. Um, I know maybe you think I'm a little bit uh, old fashioned, but I don't care. <laughs> 
I just love books, the real, the real, the real McCoy, the real thing. So, I'm right with yeah, it's and and whatever we can, you know, we can share things. Uh, of course, we have got again p- platforms like blogs and and uh, social media and uh, lots of other ways we can, uh, you know, we can use uh, gatherings like this on t- online. Um, a few years ago, it wouldn't be possible to connect with you in the United States, you know, or even within the same country to be all to unite like this. So I also like to say how grateful we are because. We are able to access people like us here and connect with one another. Uh, even though we went through and we are still going through a pandemic, uh, not in the same uh, the same uh, uh, turmoil as before. And but books are, you know, I, I was I, I really would like to share that uh, this book with you. And then if you got a recommendation of a book that you you actually attached your soul recently, please do share with us. OK, uh, the one I'd like to share is called The Last Bear. Um, I don't know Hannah Gold personally. We are connected on Facebook. I haven't ever met her, but her book really touched me. Uh, the heroes in the book is a little girl and this, this polar bear. Uh, and is very much connected with what's happening on our planet Earth, the environmental crisis and how we treat animals and the planet and nature. Um, but it's coming from a young girl's view and the friendship between her and the polar bear. And I'm not gonna say any more because probably you will feel tempted to read it. And I would really love you to read it. And come back to me and let me know what you thought of it. I highly, highly recommend it. I I cried. It is a children's book, really, but it's it touched my heart and my soul in ways that you know I, I didn't believe that you know she's incredible with words. Hannah's, Hannah's way of, of using words is it's beautiful as well. But the feelings, the emotions that they were created inside me. Imagine now children reading these kind of books as well, or children were offered the option to write about their own feelings how they connect with animals, how connect with the planet, with nature. And that's what, what we are doing here at Rainbow Let's Do Not Earth. So that's one of my recommendations. So uh, have you got a recommendation that, you know, I could recommend lots of books because I love reading books. <laughs> so, uh, but I just, I just, this book, you know, connects very much with, with the vision and mission of, of, of what we're doing here at Rainbow Let's Mother Earth. So that's why, it was on top of my list, okay? And we're talking about children's uh, um, self-expression and then self-belief and self-worth, so all of that. So if you got a recommendation, you got a book that you have read, not just recently, but sometime that, that it did touch you and it did you know, help you to change, to support you, to empower you, um, uh, to enrich your life, please unmute yourself. And if you don't want to say too much, just say the title of the book. And that that would be fine. If you would like to say a short summary, uh, please, you know, do. So who would like to go next? Is there anyone? So if you don't have a book to recommend, I will ask, I will ask you something else. <sighs> Oh, yes. Yes, that's beautiful. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. It's actually translated in Greek as well. And I've got a copy of the book. Thanks to Maria. She sent me a copy. This is, have you, have you, have you read this book? Have you had a, you may, you may have seen some uh, uh, posts on, on Facebook maybe, but this is, this is a beautiful book as well. He's, he has sold Millions and millions. Beautiful, beautiful. Can Thank you tell you. us what it was, Chrysula? Because because she's only small on our screens, we couldn't see what it was. Okay, so so Maria, you need to unmute yourself. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ah, now 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 it's now you're featured, so I can see it. Ah, this the boy, is Charlie yeah. McCasey. Yeah. The boy, the mule, the fox, and the horse. Yeah. Beautiful illustrations and, and yeah, words. And the actual simplicity of it, the simplicity of it is just, 
you know, the conversations between these animals, I, and the boy. I and just, Priscilla, I just uh, picked uh, uh -huh. a page just uh, without any consideration. Uh, big, uh, so what what it does it say? Share, share with us, please. Yes. It's a question. What is the bravest thing you've ever said? Asked the boy. Help, said the horse. Mm -hmm. This is this is a, the idea of this book. Mm -hmm. is, um, something more. One one more. Uh, sometimes I worry. You you all realize I am ordinary, said mm -hmm. the boy. <laughs> Love doesn't need love doesn't need you to be extraordinary," said the mole. I I, I think this is a, a book for uh, uh, ages from uh, one year old, two year old till ninety year old. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's not a novel. It's a. Uh, uh, it, it, uh, the values and uh, some uh, uh, it helps you think in life positive, in a positive way. Yes, in, in yeah. a positive and in the, uh, through the eyes of uh, these uh, four heroes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. And yes, it's, it's best Thanks. selling in Greece. I yeah. think it's in UK. It has been a bestseller for a long yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, must be a very rich and, man. And the actual, <laughs> the actual uh, creator of this book, he's such a humble, uh, uh, very down to earth man. You know, I've seen an interview him talking about you know how things are progressed and and I love I love how things happen like that. And that's he, what the book portrays as well. He, to be he's to also be, a very isolated man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the well, difficult to, to contact with. Uh, he contacts I, through the book. I I I, I heard from uh, a person from the publishing house, the Greek publishing house, that they are trying a lot of time to have contact with him for an interview, and uh, he's in his own world, you know. He, he doesn't like very much to publicity. Yeah, he doesn't like publicity as much. To yeah. talk about uh, his job, although he's uh, living uh, free books uh, in uh, different spots. Uh, so, so, so someone um, to pick it up and have it as a present. Yeah. Uh, he Beautiful. does. Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much. Yes, it is also being. It's also. Be an author or writing a book, it, you need to have a very generous heart as well. That's what I believe, you know, because you give so much of your energy and time and, and thought process into it. You've got to be that kind of person. Otherwise, you cannot. <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> so if anyone asks, you know, what do you need in order to create a book, to write a book? Definitely, you need to dedicate a lot of your energy and time. So um, for, for all the best reasons in the world. Right. Um, Noreen, would you like to share something about uh, collaboration, about contribution? Because you are also, you are also, you've got your own beautiful community at Epona Retreat Center in, in wonderful Ireland. So have you got something you'd like to share with us? Um, yeah, um, I suppose, Chrisola, I'm just so grateful to be here on this group and as you say to be um and to Myra as well for inviting me into this community because and I suppose Myra you've seen you know my work when I when I work with my community I work with nature I work with tree you know as you said the woods and trees and animals are my life and that's where I get my love so I can actually share it to my community. And, and it's, I suppose it's just such a simple life. And I suppose these are the tools that I kind of show people going, sit out in nature and just listen to the birds. You'd be so surprised. So many people can't hear them, you know, when they're out there, they're just, 
Um, so yeah, so it's collaborating, and and I suppose for me is when we when we put it out to the universe to create that love, we actually attract that love into our life, mm -hmm. and that's why we're all here here tonight is and sharing with our community this love and light and we do and as you say there's a lot of people out there and you know some of my friends who are very down at the moment who are connected to nature and connected to the world and they feel that energy is so heavy and I suppose it's us here we have to give them the light of as you say, your poetry, Sharon, is just so calming, so beautiful, you know, when we connect. And, and I think this is where we, I suppose for me, is sending the love, you know, to Russia, you know, to Ukraine. We have to send that light to them and show them, We, as you said, Chrisola, we have to be the light. We have to be the people that will change so that the rest of the world will change as well with us. And if we only change one person in our life, can you imagine everybody changing one person? It would be amazing, you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, collaboration and just, as you say, community, we can make such a difference. And what I loved as well in you know the last poem was about educating our children to just know that love and I think that was something that changed me when I decided to change my life it wasn't for me I was changing it it was for my children so that when they grow up they will only see love and light in their lives and they won't see the fear and the hatred and discrimination and I think that was one thing for me that changed my life was having my children to change them to feel to have that community and yeah I hope I hope they get that from me oh they do and my family yeah. oh they do I am absolutely you. certain about this absolutely <laughs> even though I may not say it they not show it but <laughs> I you? I know I know that children may not always say things but they do <laughs> feel things they do feel things yeah. at a very deep level I know that. Yes. I know that. So beautiful work. Thank you so much, Noreen. Thank you. And you work, you work you. with with uh, with uh, horses and healing with horses, Raiki, and and everything you do. It's so so in open hearted, so light hearted and inspirational. Love it. So thank you so much for being part of 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 our project and and having your energy and light here with us. Thank you. Thank you. So. Um, I would have loved Kelly to say a few words, but but probably something she had she had to go. Probably there will be another occasion when Kelly Kelly Chester will be joining us, and and then we'll be sharing something about her new book, Unfiltered. I would love to know more about this book as well, and then hear it from her voice as well, from her perspective. There will be other other ways we can connect. I'm sure we will. So. Uh, Sue, so I would like you to say something because you love books and you work with books and you write books as well. Uh, and, and you have been the editor of uh, two of my books of, of, of The Little Sparks of Joy and also uh, the book of Soulful Musings. Uh, and both these books are, are collaborative books and they've got, they are both in color uh, with beautiful illustrations, beautiful photography. Uh, with a range of interviews and, and life inspired conversations with people I've interviewed are connected personally. And I believe that in the power of the real life story as well, storytelling is, is truly, truly powerful for many, many good reasons. So Sue, so what are you doing these days? If you'd like to say, <laughs> what are you up to? You got any news for us or, oh. or just... Uh, just <laughs> Have you got any news for us or not? You might be shocked, Chris Uli. You might be shocked. <laughs> so, yes, I've loved books all my life. You know, I was one of those real avid readers as a child and always on the next colour level books, you know, with what happens in schools, you know. And for me, it was really 
um, then they were obviously all fiction mostly and it was escapism you know it was being the the childhood sort of famous five investigators detectives you know um, Judy Bloom's books uh, talking about Scotland and places that I hadn't been you know and those descriptions of those so so from an early age I was hooked on books and you know I'm old enough that when we did a school project we got a big encyclopedia or, or all of those types of books as well you know so the fascinating learning that came from from those sorts of books but certainly um in 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 these more mature years um yes the whole sort of power of books to help and inspire people as well as for that joy that you can get from the escapism of, of a fiction story so on, on the sort of personal development side, um, you know, books sort of Susan Jeffers, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, mm -hmm. Tony Robbins books, you know, all, all of those big names in that field um, really, you know, about 15 years ago, they had a big impact and, and helped me to change a lots of things in my, my life that had just never occurred to me before, basically, really, until I read those books. Um, and over the, that last 10 years or so, I've been helping other people with their books, as Priscilla said, editing, proofreading, etc. And a lot of those books, 90, 90 plus percent of those have been either personal memoir books, um, collaboration books um, of, of either people telling their own stories or talking about their therapeutic work, etc., and wow, I've learned such a lot from those books. And I've, you know, met and connected with so many empowering, inspirational people. And I just love to share that, those stories really, because I do believe they can change people's lives, you know, and people find out about different therapies, different techniques, or even, you know, writing poetry, et cetera, and it moves them and it changes their lives. And today, you know, we are all experiencing the connection that creativity can bring as well, you know. And as, as uh, people said, you know, you, you write those words, you, you can't always see the impact that they have on others of that one person reading that story, reading that poem, reading that chapter and the impact it has, but, but certainly... The stories and the memoirs and and the, you know what's happened to people has, has really impacted my life in, in the last few years and books you know that's that's the power of words that's the power of books that's the power of sharing stories and connecting with people and what I always love when I come on these calls is the fact that we have a international cornucopia of people you know and that that does make us all feel connected and yes you know it is troubling times but we can all come together you know and and be united and celebrate creativity in books and that's that's wonderful it is it is wonderful and thank you sue thank you so much um uh, your support has been incredible thank you uh, it's it's a uh, you know you're not an editor just it's something so you know you've become <laughs> you have become a good friend as well of over the last few years so thank you um, now, uh, I would like to, to finish, the, to complete our celebration of books tonight and uh, all of you wonderful book lovers um, with, uh, with my wish. And I, and, and I believe that you all feel connected with that wish. Uh, and just a little reminder of the importance of, of reading books to our children. Um, I, I think, you know, it, it's, it is one of the most wonderful, calming techniques for you as an adult, whether you are a parent or you're a grandparent or a sibling or a grandma or a godmother, it doesn't matter. Uh, when you've got that calm in yourself, how much that affects the, 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 the child, it doesn't matter what age. And I also love the idea of, of reading out, out loud rather than just reading for yourself, which is incredibly beautiful anyway and therapeutic. But reading out loud and sharing and putting this, the voice like Sharon and Casey shared with us tonight, um, reading yourself, it has got 
it, it touches you in, in one or two possible, however many ways, but when you read it through somebody else's voice and somebody else's heartbeat, oh, it touches you in a different way, right? <laughs> So, um, so thank you, thank you for for sharing this wish and, and and this kind reminder to everyone who is actually watching this on repeat or replay, uh, and just check, ask yourself, when was the last time I read something to my grandchild or to my child or uh, uh, or as a teacher, when was the last time I had something an activity, a book to to read as as a group as a class. And that's what I would like us to do, you know, to bring these books in a classroom environment, in our in families, and and connect with this with these poems, connect with the the writing of the children, because in this book you also got children's um, um, letters in the form of poems or drawings, and carry on, carry on, because I'll be I'll be going out there, and then and then you can bring bring your letters directly to me or you can uh, take a picture of it and send it by email everything is possible okay so let's carry on this beautiful work this important work uh, and and i would love to go and visit schools and i would love to go out there and have more ambassadors working together and we can spread the word and we can run workshops there's so many things we could do together so it's beautiful thank you thank you thank you Thank you, and 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 if you if you would like to know more about Rainbow Let's Mother Earth and how you can get involved, we we run monthly meetings as well, and these meetings are open for you, the the Rainbow Warrior, the parent, the teacher, the creative spirit to come along and connect with us and see how you can bring your own idea, you can bring your own seed, your own inspiration, and uh, how we can all co-create something beautiful out there. We all love you to volunteer and support and we can collaborate in beautiful, creative ways. Okay, so big kiss for me, Priscilla and these wonderful people tonight. Thank you for, for coming and keep reading, keep writing, keep expressing yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Good night. Thank Good you. <laughs> you haven't stopped smiling, Sharon. It's lovely. <laughs>